Okay, so today I'm doing a review for Six Sacred Swords, which is a fantasy story, and Arsenic and Adobo, which is a cozy mystery. I'll keep it spoiler free for both of them, but timestamps in the description if you want to jump around the books. I'm going to start with Six Sacred Swords. So this is my second book by this author. Um, so the this is connected to the first book that I read by him which will be on the screen, and that series, which I haven't continued in yet, but the author told me that I could read them in whatever order I wanted, which is true. And I really liked the story of this one, though I didn't really ever connect with the main character. So this is what I would call a lighthearted, funny, fun fantasy. Very fast, easy, easy to read quickly. Uh, if you're, if you're in the middle of a lot of very epic, heavy, intense stories. Like, I've been reading a lot of big fantasy stories lately. This was a really great book to put in between those that was still mystical and whimsical and funny and fun without breaking your brain. <laughs> like, for instance, Malazan does. In a good way. I love Malazan. So the protagonist of this story's name is Karis, and he is looking for a secret and ancient sword that wields a lot of power. So in that, he faces a lot of obstacles in order to get to the sword. I think all of this author's books are kind of inspired by and meant to feel like certain video games. I'm pretty sure Six Sacred Swords was uh, inspired by, meant to feel like The Legend of Zelda, Zelda and uh, Final Fantasy. So I guess know that going in. It's very lighthearted, it's very sequential, and humorous, and just kind of fun. So he faces off against multiple obstacles to get to the sword. One of those obstacles is a dragon that he ends up facing off against and making friends with. She is a very lighthearted character that can take human form, what we call her human form. She considers both her dragon form, just different types of dragon forms. Uh, she She's really into books and doesn't always know the difference between real dragon mythology and like other fictional stories about dragons. We also have a sentient sword in the story that is super funny. The interactions between the three are hilarious. There is one dynamic be between the three that I couldn't quite wrap my head around at all, but that's fine for the most part. I really enjoyed the dynamics between the three. It was very funny. Uh, the way the dragon sees the world, the way the sword sees the world, and the way Kara sees the world are three very different things, and them trying to communicate with their different ways of viewing things was pretty hilarious. And like I said, just in general, it's a very lighthearted, fast-paced, feel-good fantasy. I would say my biggest complaint about this book is in Karis himself. I just didn't connect with his character at all. And I think while the author says that you can read these in whatever order you want, and that absolutely is true, I think that reading this story at this point actually did me a disservice for enjoying Karis as a protagonist, because I'm pretty sure there's another story where we get his beginning, and I'm hanging out with him in his middle, which means that he's already very powerful from the moment I meet him, so he doesn't really have much of a physical arc. He's already experienced a lot of pain and has become who he wants to be at this point, or at least that's how it comes off, which means that there's not a lot of emotional or mental growth in him. And just in general, he's a hero, which I'm a bad person. I'm not that interested in such an intense hero, someone who will do anything to do the right thing, always, even if it's kind of a really big sacrifice keeping it spoiler free. His internal mo monologue is largely, I'm not gonna hurt someone unless I have to, I'm not going to uh, let the gods manipulate me or manipulate other people, I'm always going to do my best to do what's right by everybody all the time, always. And that's kind of like the thread of what we see from him throughout this entire book. And I'm cool with following a good guy, but he's just so intensely good and so intensely talented and skilled that I just didn't really feel any sort of conflict with him, except for his kind of dark, not really dark, but like emotional past that he kept hinting at, which was in the other book. So I feel like I missed all of his growth and now I'm at him 
where he's just like choosing to be the best boy he can be, which isn't that interesting to me. Judge me how you will, but that is how I feel. <laughs> But overall, it was a really fun story, and I enjoyed reading it, and I am reading the sequel. Next is Arsenic and Adobo, which is a cozy murder mystery. This is about a girl who grew up in this small town, left for college, and then ended up in a bad relationship, just got out of that bad relationship, and she's come home. Her family uh, owns this Filipino restaurant, and they're all Filipino, and she is helping them while she's visiting home, but she's not happy to be back in her hometown. She wants out again. But then her ex-boyfriend ends up uh, dying in her restaurant after she finishes serving him. It turns out there's arsenic in his food. She's probably the murderer. I mean, probably not, but that's what the detectives think. So that's the basic setup for this, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So murder mysteries are super not my thing, but I did enjoy this for all the other reasons <laughs> in the book. Our protagonist has this really dry, witty, sassy uh, sort of humor, which fits this book really well and sets the tone of this book really well. Uh, she breaks the fourth wall sometimes and just in general tends to view the world around her in this borderline negative but very funny way. She has a passion for food, and obviously so does the author, that shines through hugely, which is great because she's a cook, her family loves food, and food is a big part of her heritage and her culture, so it's a big part of the book. And the author's descriptions of food and the uh, character's clear love for creating food and sharing food is all throughout the book, which it was great. I thought it was really well done. But my favorite part of this story, the best part of this story, was the family dynamics. This big Filipino family that loved to cook, loved to share food, and have a whole lot of sass within their all all their dynamics. I think all of my favorite scenes were in just sitting around at a table with them while they snipped at each other and talked and laughed and loved each other but also insulted each other. Um, there were so many hilarious lines in this family dynamic and anytime someone else would come into the family dynamic, the way they spoke to them, the way they talked with them, the way they embraced them and I just, I loved, I loved the people in this book. There was also a little bit of romance in it which I thought was really well done and really cute. My biggest thing that I didn't care about in this book was the mystery. Not that I didn't care about it, it's just I don't care about murder mysteries which, why am I reading this book? <laughs> but I did enjoy it! Um, I didn't think that the murder mystery was difficult to solve at all. I figured it out relatively quickly. I figured out most parts of it relatively quickly and then I was just kind of, you know, waiting for a protagonist to catch up and there were some pretty big clues in there that she didn't get. And I was like, why are you not looking into this? This is, it's right in front of you and you're just going that way, which is fine. It's a cozy murder mystery, so I don't think it's meant to be incredibly difficult to solve. I think it's just meant to be fun and to feel good, and it 100% did that. I would say that if you're into cozy murder mysteries, definitely don't miss this one, because it has a lot of dynamics that make it fun for even people who aren't into this genre, and I thought that the mystery itself, while I, while I found most of the elements of it not that difficult to sort through, um, it was still a fun, silly, fun story. <laughs> Those are my reviews for Six Sacred Swords and Arsenic and Adobo. I recommend both personally. Uh, affiliate links for them will be linked in the description. If you have read these, if you plan to read these, I'd love to chat with you more about it in the comments. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.